Welcome back, my name is Baller Scuba, this is Video Games Over Time. We are still in 1976, and today we're going to talk about Breakout. The story of Breakout begins at Atari. Atari was still riding high on the profits brought by Pong. Nolan Bushnell wanted to turn Pong into a single-player game, deciding on a game that would use a ball and paddle to deplete a wall of bricks. Nolan Bushnell thought this idea would be a big deal. So, with engineer Steve Bristow helping, Atari was able to come up with a workable concept. Al Alcorn was assigned as the project manager and began development with Cyan Engineering, a subsidiary of Atari. Bushnell also assigned a young Steve Jobs to the project. Jobs was hired by Al Alcorn in 1974, when Jobs had brought in a video game board that would play Pong with only around 30 chips. Most Atari games at the time required 150 to 170 chips, so this was quite impressive. But Steve Jobs had not actually made this board. Jobs' friend Steve Wozniak, a Hewlett Packard employee, had made it. Jobs was also proving to be a problem employee. Jobs believed his special fruitarian diet meant that he did not have to shower. His coworkers disagreed. Jobs had also left work for months to spend time in India instead of doing his job. By the time Nolan Bushnell was giving out assignments for Breakout, though, he was aware that Steve Jobs was not the designer that Atari initially thought he was. He was also aware, though, that Steve Wozniak was, and decided to use Jobs to get to Wozniak. So Bushnell offered Jobs $750, roughly $3,400 in 2020, for each chip fewer than 50 on the board. Jobs agreed and promised a prototype within four days. Steve Jobs reached out to Steve Wozniak and convinced him to work on the project, promising to split the money evenly. Wozniak worked at Atari for four nights straight, doing some additional designs at his day job, and was able to meet the deadline. The final breadboard, which was assembled and tested by Jobs, was delivered to Atari with 44 chips. Nolan Bushnell was impressed and paid Jobs the money that was promised. However, Steve Jobs only gave Steve Wozniak $350 for the work. Jobs had lied to Wozniak, stating that the agreement was only for $700 if the design was fewer than 50 chips and $1,000 for fewer than 40 chips. However, Atari claims they could not use Wozniak's design. It was too difficult to manufacture. Atari would end up making their own version with around 100 chips. Wozniak has stated that Atari did not understand his design, but has stated that he could not find any differences between his version and the released version. Breakout was released on May 13th, 1976. It consists of eight rows of bricks at the top third of the screen with a paddle at the bottom. The ball moves in a straight line across the screen after bouncing off the paddle. When the ball hits a brick, the brick disappears and the ball bounces back. The player loses when the ball falls to the bottom of the screen. It was released in an arcade cabinet with a black and white monitor. Strips of colored cellophane were placed over the monitor so that the bricks would appear in color. The original arcade cabinet had artwork that showed the game's plot to be a prison escape. That means the player plays the part of a prison inmate, using a mallet to knock a ball and chain into a prison cell's wall. Should the player succeed, the inmate is able to escape along with others. Around 11,000 breakout cabinets were constructed over the course of its life. The game was a hit. With the story of Breakout now told, it's time to play the game. And here is the game. This is Breakout. As you can see, this version of the game that we are playing has the uh, colored bricks at the top and the blue line at the bottom. Uh, that represents what you would have seen through the cellophane, uh, even though the original version did not have those colors added on the game itself. Uh, but this is a, a, an accurate representation of what you would have played uh, through a cabinet in 1976. So uh, let's go ahead and put a couple uh, quarters in there and we will get started. Uh, as you can see, I have a very small paddle here. And once again, I don't have the paddle controllers. So uh, we're just gonna have to hope that this keeps up to speed. I think I have to hit the button here, the serve button. Um, so let's get that going. It, there's a huge delay on it. 
that that went through that went through the paddle there uh but this is breakout uh, we'll play this for a little bit. Uh, there is a maximum score in this game, which is not something that I talked about in the, the rest of the video, uh, but we're, we're not going to get that. Um, as you can see, the ball moves very quickly after just a short period of time. Um, the maximum score is to get rid of two uh, entire sets of bricks which i believe gives you a score of 896 there is technically a way to get around that uh because there's technically only two um yes now just started moving too quick for me um there is a way around that uh if you are able to put in like a second quarter when the first person's still going uh the second player can technically get uh three um, three screens of bricks. I'm not good at this. Uh, three screens of uh, bricks. And that can be the new high score. So it'd be, what, uh, 896 plus 448, which would be 1342. 1342, I believe, um, if my math's right, uh, would be the actual highest sc score that's physically possible in the game, technically possible, but that's not really what they want you to do. Uh, the maximum score is really supposed to be um, 896. Uh, there's not, even though there's scores in this and there's two players that can play, um, this is supposed to be a, wow, it is finicky. Um, it is technically supposed to be, uh, supposed to be a single player game um, where you destroy bricks and, you know, technically this is supposed to be a prison. I think that is something that is just kind of added later ah, that was me going as fast as i could okay ah, we're just gonna keep doing this no <laughs> um it doesn't feel like the game has a story i feel like that's something that was tacked on later this is definitely just supposed to be single player pong um it, it does wow it doesn't make sense well, well I'm at least one more quarter here it doesn't make sense for the game um for the setup for this to be a prison um there's a prison with what eight well i was too busy counting uh the bricks to to actually pay attention uh eight bricks deep of a wall yeah the serve button it, it takes a while i think that was a good two seconds before it actually showed up um it doesn't make sense for it to be a prison for me i understand uh the the desire for it to be you know, a concept where you break out, that you're kind of trapped. But, you know, this being a ball and chain and a mallet and a prison, I tried. Uh, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me, given the setup here. Um, that's I feel like that's definitely something that was added after the fact. This is just supposed to be single player Pong. And they figured out a good way to do it, right? Because they couldn't do an AI player yet. That's not something that was possible for them. They couldn't do a computer player in Pong, right? Uh, computers had um, the ability to do some games uh, with with a computer player, um, but not not something that would move something back and forth. I I'm trying here. All right, we're up to twenty. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought. All right, well, we'll do one more. Um, but, you know, without the paddle controllers, which are very finicky, by the way, um, this this is going to be difficult. But Breakout by itself is difficult. There's a reason that in, you know, in the future, and we'll talk about this in later videos, they change a lot of the gameplay mechanics to make it easier. Uh, we'll talk... Wow. It's such a small paddle. Uh, we'll talk about that more in several different games uh, as we move forward. Not only for Breakout, but for a lot of different series, uh, they decide to make things easier. At the time, this is meant to eat your quarters. What are we already on? Like four quarters? In, in a very short amount of time. Um, arcades are kind of built around making money, right? The, the point is not necessarily to... Thought I had it. It's not necessarily... One more. Uh, 
is not necessarily to entertain. They want to entertain you, but they want to entertain you enough so that you spend another quarter, right? That's the goal. It's not necessarily for you to sit back and go, wow, I had a great time. It's for you to go, okay, let's put another quarter in. However they get that to happen is fine by them. You know, that's the way that I always look at arcade games is that the goal is not necessarily your enjoyment. Um, they want you to, to spend money. And sometimes enjoyment is a key part of that, and sometimes it's not. Sometimes the, the game's designed around um, frustrating you. But frustrating you so that you keep on wanting to play. I don't know why the 9 is broken whenever I get a, a score of 9. It's just not showing up properly. Uh, but, yeah, this is Pong. Well, not Pong. Uh, it kind of is Pong, uh, but this is Breakout. This is this is where single player games kind of started for the mainstream. Um, obviously, it's not the first single player game that that was ever made. We've talked about a lot of previous video games um, that would have counted, but you know, this is jeez. This is one of the early mainstream titles. This is a a game that kind of became its own it, it, you know when you look at this game now you don't necessarily think to yourself oh this is just pong but that's what uh that's what they ended up making i think this is my best score so far this is probably a good place to to call it see that's a 39 i don't know why it's you know kind of glitched out there but this is yeah this is a this is pong as you can see <laughs> let's break out but it, it's pong uh, in the sense that it's a ball and paddle. And that is something that we will talk about a bit. Uh, as I say, a, a, a Pong clones, just think ball and paddle. Um, the ball just kind of moves in different directions or um, the goal of the game can be slightly different. But when we think of ball and paddle games, um, they commonly are referred to as Pong clones. And this is definitely a Pong clone, but it was different enough to become its own. So that's Breakout. It's a little bit more fun than Pong, I would say, but not a lot. With the game now played, it's time to talk about how the game plays today. As you might suspect, I'm a little negative on the game in terms of a modern review at this point. Uh, if you are interested in seeing uh, where this style of game originated, this is great. But uh, for you to play it now, you're going to be missing things. You're going to be missing um, completions. Uh, you know, once you get through two screens of it, you're done. And that's as far as you can go. You can't get better than that. Two screens and you're done. So it's short um, for games of this style. But uh, really, at the end of the day, uh, it was also a product of its time. It's designed around getting quarters out of you, not necessarily entertaining you. Um, it's borderline frustrating. It is uh, not as frustrating as Pong, uh, but once again, um, it has to do with the control setup. We don't have the paddle controllers here, uh, but the paddle controllers are very finicky. They're very sensitive, and it takes a long time to... Um, use the learn how to use those properly even if I did have them uh, I have used them in the past I, I just don't have any of my own um, they are these are games that are definitely of their time breakout is definitely a big hit right 11,000 cabinets makes it a big hit uh, for the 70s um, but it has a lot to do with what is available at the time, and considering what is available now, um, the game is very minimal. Uh, I can't imagine you getting friends together and wanting to play Breakout. Like, maybe you could do Pong, maybe, but with Breakout, since it's a single-player game, it's people taking turns, and um, it makes you feel stupid when you play it. I, I will say that. Uh, Pong does the same thing. When you're playing it, it's like, what? Did I not judge the angles properly? What's going on? But the paddle is so small and it moves so slowly with the setup that I can get that it just ends up a lot of frustration. Um, the gameplay is uh, minimal, right? It's just a ball bouncing back and forth. This is four years after the release of Pong and outside of adding bricks that disappear the gameplay has not changed really this is still pong um but 
it, it is different enough that it deserved a spotlight, but it's just not necessarily fun today. The sound is less than Pong, is if that can be a thing. Like it's just the the sound of the bricks uh, destroying and the the ball bouncing off the paddle. They don't even have the buzzer anymore, which is good. I didn't like the buzzer, so I'm glad that it's gone. But that means that the sound design is half of what Pong was four years earlier. Uh, in terms of gameplay, it's you know, it's essentially a rehash of Pong. It's a reimagining of Pong. Um, in terms of replayability, this is not something that I want to go back to. Um, this is something that um, I'm glad that I did something with, that I talked about, that I played, but I know that there's better games out there. And I think that most people kind of look at it from that perspective too, um, that there's different for you out there. And that is something that is difficult to overlook when you play a game um, this far away from when it was released. So that's at least my modern review. It's it's not necessarily fun today. Um, I would only recommend it for people that are once again interested in the history of video games uh, or are really addicted to this style of game and want to see where that started. Um, but there are better versions out there. For the time though, Breakout was seen as far more than a simple Pong variant. Breakout was not just a single-player version of Pong. Breakout broke out of Pong Shadow and became known as a classic game all by itself. The game would go on to spawn its own clones and its own sequel. Because of Breakout, Atari was able to further establish themselves as the leader in the emerging video game market. We will continue to keep an eye on Nolan Bushnell, Alan Alcorn, Steve Bristow, Cyan Engineering, and the full Atari Corporation. As for Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, there will be much more to come later. And that is Breakout! My name is Baller Scuba. this has been Video Games Over Time! Thank you so much for watching! I hope you laughed, I hope you learned, and I hope to see you next time, where we will be playing a certain computer adventure game.